Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet, Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all our Guru Maharajas. Thank you. We are so, so, so fortunate to have you here, Maharaj. If you so be so kind today and enlighten us from Canto number 7, chapter 2, verses 50 and 55. Whenever you're ready, Maharaj, you may take the call over. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, we can't hear you Maharaj, you're muted. Okay. Okay, one minute, I'll be right back. Yes Maharaj. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Labdako Vine Kasche Labdako Vine Vipine Kasche Vaksinam Nirmitam Takaha Vitaya jalam vida de tatra tatra palo bayan. There was once a hunter who lured birds with food and captured them after spreading a net. He lived as if appointed by death personified as the killer of the birds. Purport this is another incident from the histories. <clears throat> Text 51. Kulingam matunam tatra vicharat samadrishyata tayo kalingi tahasa lupta keno palovita. Translation. <clears throat> While wandering in the forest, the hunter saw a pair of kulinga birds. Of the two, the female was captured by the hunter's lure. Text 52. Sahasa jata sischa sahasa jata sischa atantrayam mahiyas kala yantrita kulingas tam tatapanam nirikshya brishadu hitaham snehalapalka kripanam kripanam paya devayat. Translation, O Queen of Suyagya, the male Kulinga bird, seeing his wife put into the greatest danger in the grip of providence, became very unhappy. Because of affection, the poor bird, being unable to release her, began to lament for his wife. Text 53. Oho Akurano Deva Triya karunaya vibhu kripanam mamano shaujantya dinaya kim karishyati. Translation. Alas, how merciless is providence. My wife, unable to help, be helped by anyone, is in such a poor and awkward position and lamenting for me. What will providence gain by taking away this poor bird? What will be the profit? Text 54. Kamanayatu mamdevam kim mardyad nat manohime dinena jivata dukyam 
Translation. If unkind providence takes away my wife, who is half my body, why should he not take me also? What is the use of my living with half of my body, bereft, bereaved by loss of my wife? What shall I gain in this way? Text 55. Katam twajatam paksam stam mitrahinam vibramiyaham mandabhagya patikshante nideme mataram prajaha Translation. The unfortunate baby birds being reft of their mother are waiting in the nest for her to feed them. They are all still very small and have not yet grown their wings. How shall I be able to maintain them? Purport. The bird is lamenting for the mother of his children because the mother naturally maintains and takes care for the children. Yamaraj, however, in disguise of a small bird boy, I'm sorry, small boy, has already explained that although his mother left him uncared for and wandering in the forest, the tigers and other ferocious animals had not eaten him. The real fact is that the supreme personality of God protects one, even though one be motherless and fatherless, one can be maintained by the good will of the Lord. Otherwise, if the Lord does not give one protection, one must suffer in spite of the presence of his father and mother. Another example is that sometimes a patient dies in spite of a good physician and good medicine. Thus, without the protection of the Lord, one cannot live with or without parents. Another point in this verse is that, uh, drop down a little bit, you can't see the whole thing. Drop it down a little. Good. Another point in this verse is that fathers and mothers have protective, protective feelings for their children, even in bird and beast society, not to speak of human society. Kali Yuga is so degraded that a father and mother even kill their children in the womb on the plea of their scientific knowledge that within the womb the child has no life. Prestigious medical practitioners give this opinion, and therefore the father and mother of this day kill their children within the womb. How degraded human society has become. Their scientific knowledge is so advanced that they think that within the egg and the embryo there is no life. Now these so-called scientists are receiving Nobel Prizes for advancing the theory of chemical evolution. But if chemical combinations are the source of life, why don't the scientists manufacture something like an egg through chemistry and put it in an incubator so the chicken will come out? What is their answer? With their scientific knowledge, they are unable to create even an egg. Such scientists are described in the Bhagavad Gita as Maya Aparita Gyana, fools whose real knowledge has been taken away. They're not men of knowledge, but they pose as scientists and philosophers, although their so-called theoretical knowledge cannot produce uh, Keep going. I didn't finish the purport. I couldn't see the rest of it. They are not men of knowledge, but they are so they pose as science, although their so called scientific knowledge cannot produce practical results. Omagyan timirandasya gena jana salakaya chaksun mulitam yena. Thus, my Sri Guravena Maha, Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam, Stapitam yena butale svayam rupa kedamayam dadati svam padati kam. Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutale Sri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namri Namaste Saraswati Deve 
Gorvani Pacharine never says Asun Yavari Pastyatya Dayasitarine. Panchakalpa Taru Vishya Kripa Sindhu Pe Vacha Patikanam Parvani Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadahar Srivasadi Gaur Bhaktarindam Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. The Acharyas, who know the science of Bhakti Yoga, give the formula for what is actually surrender to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Or you might say, surrender to the process of Bhakti Yoga. And in that, they describe six characteristics that make up the process of surrender. Three of the characteristics is centered around one's understanding of the Lord, their relationship with the Lord in three different categories. And they are, as it, the Supreme Lord is my only maintainer, the Supreme Lord is my only protector, and my Supreme Lord is my only provider. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not some nice words that are spoken in the Shastras to get people to engage in devotional service. It is a fact because, as it says, Rake Krishna Mori Ke Mori Krishna Rake Ke, that the protection comes from the source of protection through the different channels that put the, present themselves as the protecting agents or the providing agents, the maintaining agents. For instance, even if a, even if a parent is there and they're qualified, we might say even a mother and father are there, but still the child might die or may get sick, or may get lost, and may get even get may even get neglected. But in many other cases, there were where there was no apparent protection. If some of Krishna wants that person to live, or he wants to give protection, then it happens because his will is supreme. We have a personal example in our own life wherein uh, we were receiving some letters from people who were imprisoned in jails in the United States. And during the COVID epidemic, there was one particular jail that practically everyone got COVID. But the authorities, the supervisors in the jail, didn't do anything to help the inmates with their sickness. They pretty much left them on their own. One of these young men was actually corresponding with us, and he was quite new in Krishna consciousness. So he was also afflicted by the disease and not given any care. So he went into his cell and with deep absorption into the holy name and he prayed to Krishna and he chanted and he was completely cured after about a week's time from the disease without any care without any medicine simply by his faith in the supreme lord and his surrender to the lord in the form of chanting the lord's holy name uh, he came out completely healthy without any treatment, whereas others who have gotten treatment have also been afflicted and may have also succumbed to the disease. So you might say, well, one person is lucky and another person is unlucky, but that doesn't really tell you anything. Anybody can use words that really have no meaning. But what it is, it's the will of the Lord. Srila mm. Prabhupada would often say, no one can do good to anyone unless the Lord allows it to happen. 
whether one is a father, a guru, a teacher, or anyone in a position of responsibility for others, uh, only by the Lord's mercy can that person provide what is what is being expected to be provided. Otherwise, it won't happen. We have examples here also. So, therefore, a devotee always takes shelter of Krishna. And following those principles, every Krishna becomes ultimately everything for the devotee. And therefore, whatever the devotee tries to do, they depend on Krishna for success in the operation. And if Krishna doesn't give success, then they go on with their service and they're not disturbed because they're trying to please Krishna by their activities and simply if the activity doesn't come out according to what would be considered success by material definitions, then they are not disturbed. They simply are not don't lose faith. Just like we had the example and Prabhupada would speak about in World War II, when the war between Germany and England was going on, uh, the mothers, the sisters, the daughters of the different soldiers were going to the churches and praying, please bring my son back, please bring my brother back, please bring my my um, my yeah, my son, my brother, my husband. But many of them were not coming back, and so they gave up. God did not provide what they asked for or he provided in a different way so but a devotee always knows that whatever happens is by the mercy of the Lord and therefore the devotee simply takes shelter of the Lord here we have this poor bird here he's lamenting for the fate of his wife and the future of his children which he can't take care of without the care without the partnership of his wife but what happens is ultimately he also becomes victimized by the same thing, his wife. So those who simply lament about the death of a loved one will also be under the influence of that same power in due course of time. So one should take care, as it says, that with the rising and the setting of a sun, Another day is lost and one is closer to death. But then it goes on to explain, except for those who use their time to hear about the activities of the all good supreme personality of Godhead. So here is the here is the platform of deathlessness. Here is the platform of fearlessness is to take shelter of Krishna and hear and chant his glory. Because one will then attain to the spiritual platform, and on the spiritual platform, no material energy can affect that living entity. They become fearless, and they also become deathless in the sense that this will be their last birth in this material world. And ultimately, they attain perfection. So no one can give protection. No one can maintain another. No one can provide anything for another unless the, the Lord allows it to happen. One white might say, well, what about karma? Doesn't God have to follow the laws of karma? Generally, he allows the laws of karma to play themselves out. But... For one who takes shelter of him, he can change the laws of karma. And one's destiny, as it's mentioned in the Nectar of the Rose, and becomes uh, redefined simply by the arrangement of the Lord, of one who takes shelter of the Lord. And using a very simple analogy, or example, you might say, is that when you are in front of the deities, and you're doing kirtan and you're clapping your hands, 
it says the lines on the hands change. In other words, your destiny is, is being changed simply by your engaging in kirtan. So one who knows that ultimately success means to take shelter of the Lord and depend on the Lord for everything. And because the Lord likes to give protection to those who surrender to him, he likes to provide for everything. And he always protects his devotee against dangers. That is the nature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One who tries to do the same thing by arranging the material energy in such a way as to give one some understanding that I am protected by my material arrangements will not be able to see how the hand of Maya can get around. We have the example of, you have many examples, but the example of Varani Kashipu, he thought he was, he was immortal. He thought of all the ways that death could possibly come. And he lived the life of licentiousness and sinful activity, exploiting others, thinking that he could go on forever doing this and gain so much material power and prestige. But all his plans were foiled simply by the appearance of the Supreme Personality of God in the form of Lord Nishringadev, who kept all of the benedictions that he received from Lord Brahma and at the same time killed the demon. So no one can protect himself in this world. And no one's intelligent and enough to think of all of the possible ways that death can come. And even if they are, still the Lord is even one step ahead because he controls the material energy and through the material energy for the materialists, he gives them the results of their karma, not so much of their desires. And for the devotees, he simply changes their karma and makes material karma into spiritual karma. In other words, everything they perform bring, brings them to a higher level of spiritual practice or spiritual realization. So a devotee has complete faith. Rake Krishna more K, more Krishna Rake K. That Krishna ultimately is my protector. And if Krishna doesn't want to protect me, then he'll protect me in another way by preserving my spiritual life and bringing me back to the spiritual world. A devotee, that, so that, that is called strata. It's called firm faith, that faith that is not broken under any material circumstance. <laughs> And now Prabhupada also talks about how people in the material world, although they claim to be uh, leaders, scientists, uh, have so many uh, accreditations from the scientific community, from the medical community, they can't even figure out the most basic thing that life begins at the time impregnation begins and the simple the simple answer is if there's no life until they say well life starts at the seventh month of pregnancy they say or they give some but if there's no life how does it grow growth means that there is some energy making it grow that that's an indication of life but they can't even figure that out because they want to go on with their half-baked and foolish statements in order to get some kind of recognition within the scientific community as coming up with some unique formula for life. Because they juggle words and they come up with something revolutionary or new, people think it's correct. But devotee is not fooled because they know it says in the Shastras that, you know, life comes from God. Life is, is developing by the arrangements of God and life ends by the 
arrangement of the Lord also. So these foolish scientists want to play the role of the Supreme Lord and think that they know more. And if they find that their material plans are being interfered with by a child coming into the wo world, then they'll terminate the birth, terminate the pregnancy, thinking that this is the best for everyone. That way one can enjoy material life without the burdensome responsibility of taking care of children. So therefore we live in a Rakshasha society because they have no compassion, they have no understanding, no knowledge, and they may present themselves as very sophisticated, and they may even sp speak with big words, but ultimately they're just foolish and at the same time uh, selfish. They have no understanding of the purpose of life, nor can they find happiness in whatever they do even though they make so many plans to do it. <laughs> so we listen to the words of the spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, and uh, read his books and hear his lectures. We get a clear understanding of what is reality and what is not reality, what is, what is spiritual, what is material, what is important, and what is just what we say existential or superfluous. Uh, so that's why devotees should take time regularly to read these books and understand and hear from the spiritual master. Otherwise, if we listen to the non-devotees who have big positions in the world, we think because of their position, they have authority. But it's been proven over and over again, many of them are cheaters, liars, and uh, it's people who are just into their own uh, ideas for self-aggrandizement and material gain. And that is also very much a symptom of the age of calling. This type of uh, persons take positions of leadership and exploit the population. But still, the population has faith that these people have something to say, and they're actually working for a benefit. But that's simply the trick of the modern media, which mesmerizes people's intelligence by teaching them through this electronic media that what we say is the absolute truth. You see it on the screen on television, or if you hear it on the news, it must be true. <laughs> the medium is the message. Right? So they they have rubber stamped the me the media as the authority, and the me any message that comes through that authority is authoritative. But devotees are much more intelligent than that, because they know what is the real authority. Krishna and the pure devotee is the real authority, and not these self styled authorities that come and come and go with the waves of time and prove to be just uh, ineffectual in helping anything, anyone, even themselves. <laughs> so, Prabhupada wants to make that point really clear in this purport, that we should not uh, listen to these people, and if we do, we should not believe them, <laughs> because um, they're motivated by material gain. <laughs> Okay, we can stop there. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for such wonderful explanation, wonderful examples, the real life stories. Thank you so much for making such complicated things so easy. Many pronouns at your humble feet. Many, my humble pronouns at your lotus feet. I apologize. Um, do you please? It's the time for question and answer. If you would like, if you have, please go ahead and mute yourself and ask Maharaj your questions.
Hey, Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for this class. Uh, definitely very enlightening uh, to the ways of this world and how we need to absolutely depend on the shelter of the Supreme Lord. If he wants to, he will protect us. And if not, he's not going to. So thank you so much. Love the example of the uh, person in jail. Uh, thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare uh, well. Krishna always protects his devotees, but you have to be able to understand how, how he does it. That's the, that's where the devotee needs that knowledge. He's always giving protection. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, Maharaj, what happens, um, we are in a situation and we think we are surrendering to Krishna. We are, we think that we have offered the question to the Lord and we wait for the answer to happen. But probably Maya responds uh, in a different way and we think, oh, this is what I should do. So even sometimes devotees want to do something good. Um, it doesn't end up happening. I mean, how should we see the situation? I mean, not just react, just respond probably. If we follow the principles of activity, then whatever happens is ultimately the uh, the mercy of the Lord. In other words, one one has to follow the way the, the proper way of performing the activity. If you're cooking, then you should know what it means to cook the preparation in a certain way. If you don't know how, it's going to come out. In a different way, and you can't say, "Well, that's Krishna's mercy." It's not because you just didn't do it right. <laughs> and so ultimately, <laughs> but if you do everything according to the prescribed method that's given for each activity, then whatever happens, that can be understood as Krishna's mercy. So we can't blame Krishna for our own or our own lack of understanding or our own stupidity. Yeah. Very well. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Clears many, many doubts. Um, Shukhakar Prabhuji, I see your hand raised. Would you like to go ahead and ask your question, Prabhu? Hare Krishna, Mataji. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Chandra Moli Swami Maharaj. Whenever I see you, I see a reflection from Srila Prabhupada because you're such a great disciple of Srila Prabhupada. So every time you come, you bless. In Purushottam Mena and then Kartik Mena. Now it is Bhagavad Gita Mena. This month only Krishna spoke to Arjuna. So he seek blessings. I got one small question. Can I ask? Yeah. Maharaj, you are telling that we have to follow the rules and regulations and surrender to Krishna. But sometimes some devotees, they're going through so much trouble that they are telling, it's, I'm trying my best, but everything is coming against what they are, you know, uh, expecting. So you can tell that, yes, their karma is so bad that Krishna is made from more mountain to mold, but still they have to suffer. But they are not able to understand that Krishna's hand. So how to make them understand? It's not that they are dis disrespecting, but what they are telling, Prabhu, hum log kitne achhe sab kar rahe, lekin, we are going down and down and down and down. I said, you have done so bad that Krishna has made it one-tenth or one-hundredth. So what is the way to answer that? One after the other relapses, you know, so much problem because somebody dying and somebody accident. and So they are just losing the track. What is the answer for this? Why there is, why there is some, why there's calamities in the material world is... <laughs> Is that, the, is, that, is that what they're reacting to? The, the inevitable, because this material world, Krishna says, Dukalayam Masasrutam. It's full of misery, it's calamity. It's not a place where you can make a permanent solution, nor can you make a permanent resident either way. So for a devotee, they take shelter of the Lord and receive the mercy and protection of the Lord. And the non devotees just struggle with the material energy, trying to adjust it in their time, attempts to adjust. <clears throat> sometimes something comes better for a little while, 
But adjustment is always subject to readjustment by the waves of the material energy. As the material energy is always moving. Passion, ignorance, and goodness are always <clears throat> influencing both the consciousness and the activities of the conditioned souls. So they can't find anything permanent. And if they get something for a little while, they consider that success, but then time takes it all away or changes it. But the world, you don't worry about that. The world, you simply <coughs> take shelter from the Supreme Lord and so whatever. Is, is the is solution is, is it is the solution only to just tolerate and keep suffering and praying? Uh, tolerance is there. It's a principle of the of the human culture by which one can live. Otherwise, if we don't, one doesn't learn to tolerate, one cannot even live. But to speak about moving forward in life, so tolerance has to be there. But some one has to ask the question: Why is this happening? That's the question, and then that leads them to. And you know, seek out the answer if they if they actually look for the answer instead of complaining about what's happening or trying to adjust it and make it better. You should seek the answer from those who know, but they won't do that because they think they know. <laughs> that's the problem. So they go on adjusting. That's all. Oh, one very important question. One person who was in Delhi has gone to America, his son's house, and he just got in touch with some Brahma Kumari people. They are not Iskot, they are just, they say everything is Shiva and all. So uh, he has, he told the, our devotee that a human being will become real, only human being, you don't worry about that. But this Prabhu said, no, no, no. If you are keeping eating meat and everything, you will become animal. So he said, prove it in Bhagavad Gita, where it is written that that uh, human will become animal. So uh, he wanted to an answer directly when Sloka or somebody from Bhagavatam to know that, that they can become animal. Oh, you want to know whether the birth? Yeah, well, by the by by action and by desire, one one formulates their the results of activities. So that that statement is constantly being repeated by Srila Prabhupada. We're looking for a particular verse. Ah, is it the divine and demonic nature? The 16th chapter? He was asking some words, can you give so that I can tell that Prabhupada has written, human being can, can become animal. I told him, somebody is eating pig, he'll become pig next life because pig is eating stool. He doesn't know the different discrimination. So he said, can you give me quote some words so that I can read and tell that this is what our Prabhupada saw and this is final like that. So I you just thought maybe you can. find it in the purports. The actual verse is that by the results of one's activities, one gets a, a reaction accordingly. Desire's an action. As you approach me, I reward you accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all respects. So Krishna is saying, ultimately, my path is the, all paths, both the spiritual and the material are the paths according to the person's activity. So if they're if they're acting in the material, there is three three categories. There's the mode of goodness, the mode of ignorance, and the mode of passion. Mm. Killing for the sake of eating is sinful mm. and causes one to get a reaction based on that. <coughs> uh, there are verses. I'd have to look them up, but I know there are verses in there. Okay. I can't think of the exact verse. Okay, but okay. okay. Every, but so Krishna, in the 14th chapter, 14.15, Somebody has given 14.15. Yeah. Somebody dies, dies with that is. Yeah. One dies in the mode of ignorance. What does it say ah. for the mode of ignorance? Animal. He said. Yeah, one takes birth in the animal. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Please give me blessings. 
Every time we give some blessing and I feel very happy. All of us will get blessed this Bhagavad Gita Mass. Please, we beg you, Maharaj. Please. Here it is, Karva Diamond and Train and Janta Dehu Upadhyad Hiri. That's that's by that's spoken by Prahlad Maharaj. Mm. Karma Diamond and Train. That's in the Bhagavatam. Mm. Thank you, Maharaj. Please give me blessings. I want to hear from your lotus mouth. Anyway, the Brahma Kumaris, they, uh, <laughs> they don't actually believe in the Supreme. <laughs> they are just telling Shiv Baba. And this Shiv Baba himself is a Vaishnava. You know, Vaishnava and Amitashambha, they don't know that. Yeah, they well, they, they, they say if you, if you worship Shiva, you become Shiva. That's all. You worship Vishnu, you become Vishnu. Mm. You become the object you worship. <laughs> so we can use the same philosophy. If you eat pig, you become pig. <laughs> <laughs> so the non-vegetarians who are all eating every time, they'll become a non-vegetarian animal. They'll become animal. Yeah, because a human being is meant to follow the principles given for proper activity. So in the Bhagavad Gita, it says that those who eat food in the mode of goodness, or food in the mode of passion, food in the mode of ignorance. And the results are foods in the mode of ignorance and passion cause suffering. Mataji has given one 17.10. I think that will be the correct answer. Lalitangi Mataji has just sent it. 17.10? Uh, yes. Food prepared more than three hours before being eaten. Food that is tasteless, decomposed and putrid and food consisting of remnants and untouchable things is dear to those in the mode of darkness. I think in the purport mm -hmm. proposal it has written. Yata yeah. yatam gatarasam Uti Parishutam Chayat Uchistam Api Chamediam Bojanam Tamasa Priyam. Yeah. Bojanam Tamas and Priyam. Yeah. Food that becomes dear to those in the mode of ignorance. Yeah. You see all abominable people eat nowadays. One time when Prabhupada was traveling, he found Next person eating intestine of pigs. So Prabhupada said, pig itself is eating stool. And he's going behind intestine of pig. So I just took the Google. They written that intestine is dangerous. Children should not eat. And it should be put in hot water, boiling water for one hour. Where there's so many uh, insects in there. I don't know how people yeah. are going behind. When one of our uh, sannyasis went to China, they gave him a cake that was made out of dead in dead insects. <laughs> he asked, what's it made out of? I said, you know, they collect insects and then they mix it in the cake, you know. And I don't know how this lizard and insects. People eat the most abominable things. I mean, really abominable. Even now, they, they in French restaurants, it's a delicacy, aborted fetuses. <laughs> In in Africa, I saw they were eating cockroach pickles. Cockroach yeah. pickles. And in Japan, lizard pickle. <laughs> we eat prashadam. It tastes good, sweet, and we, <laughs> want to and we get healthy. Yeah. According to the most of material nature, people <clears throat> act accordingly. Please give you a blessing, Maharaj. Yeah, well, where does it say that the animal killers do not know? There was somebody posted something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 14.60. 14.60. That is. Uh... Uh, 14.16, it says. Uh... 
Yeah, Lalit Gangi Mataji is saying slaughtering for yeah, the, the result of pious the action. Ignorance. The result of pious action is pure and is said to be in the mode of goodness, but the action done in the mode of passion results in misery. An action performed in the mode of ignorance results in foolishness. Thank you, Lalit Gangi Mataji. Yeah. But there was a statement that, that was just posted on the chat, but then it was taken down real quick. Was, uh, ah, a civilization which guides. This is so many things Mata just sent. To become a civilization which guides, it says to become <coughs> animal. And what does it say? I, didn't, I wasn't able to read it. It just came up too fast. Yeah. No, it says a civilization which guides the citizens to become animal in their next life is certainly not a human civilization. The present <laughs> human civilization is, of course, grossly misled by the modes of passion and ignorance. It's mentioned in Bhagavad Gita 14.16. 14 14 okay, thank, thank you, you so Lord. much. Maharaj, seek a blessing, Krishna Madras to Maharaj, please. There's, there's so much ignorance out there, and that's why we have to. Preach Krishna consciousness. Maybe some people please bless. Will... Bless us, Maharaj. Please, please bless. We, we get your blessings and we become little better, Maharaj. Please. Aapka <laughs> Thank you. Maharaj. There is one more question on the chat, which says, Hare Krishna Maharaji, how should we behave when Krishna is testing in crisis and please him? <laughs> when we get a crisis in our life, how should we respond to that and still keep a favorable attitude towards Krishna? Yes, I think that's what it meant. Yeah, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, I'm not the cause of anyone's happiness and distress. Material energy is. So if you act underneath the material energy, you, you're inviting certain reactions according to the particular mode you're acting on. And you can't blame Krishna. You know, he puts the, the energy to work in a certain way, just like you, uh, if you're driving along the road and there's a, there's a red light there, so the state has organized red light, green light, so you go when it's red, green, it's, you stop when it's red. So you s see the red light and you just keep going and then you have an accident and then you blame the state for the accident because you're on their roads. <laughs> it's stupid. Nobody wants to use their intelligence. And, and then, when, or else when they use intelligence and things go wrong, then they blame the Supreme Lord. Everyone's responsible for their, the results of their activities. Mm. There's laws, you have to follow the laws. There's laws of material nature, there's laws of spiritual elevation, spiritual practice. If you don't follow the laws, then you'll get something different than what you result or what you expect. It's not Krishna's fault. The state makes the laws, but if you don't follow it, you can't blame the state for, for what happens. Krishna makes the law, and if you don't follow it, you don't blame you don't blame him for what happens. He just makes the law. You follow it, you get the benefit. You don't follow it, something else happens. Thank you, Maharaj. Radha Mataji also mentions that, Maharaji, I followed chanting a little louder as you taught, and it helped. But it took time to understand your solutions. It worked. I'm grateful, eternally grateful to you. Thank you. I had seen Prahladananda Prabhuji's hand up. I, Prabhuji, are you still there?
Uh, no, Mataji, Prabhuji is not in the meeting. I don't see him, no. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Uh, where are you now? You are muted now, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Sorry. sorry. I'm, in, uh, I'm in Chennai, Maharaj. I'm in Chennai. Chennai, oh, okay. Uh, I was in Vrindavan, but at the time you had come after I left. So I couldn't meet you, Maharaj. Hmm. I like that. I was there from to meet you, sir. Fourth, fourth to tenth, I was in Vrindavan. I think you came after that. Hmm, okay. But you stay I in South. You're, you're always Chennai, in the so South. South, yeah. But I need your. I need to meet you and fall at your feet and wash your feet and drink the water, Maharaj. Nothing else. I want once, at least one time, you should allow me. If that's your plan, I'm going to avoid you. No, Maharaj, please. Because <laughs> then, then I'll go to hell. <laughs> no, no, because you are a pure devotee, Maharaj. You are not accepting, but you are a pure devotee. You are a proper disciple. So as long as you are blessing, we are all will, will not fall down further. Thank you so much, Maharaj. I don't believe you, but thank you anyway. <laughs> Maharaj. Thank you, Shukrikara Prabhuji. There's one um, a comment on the chat. It's from Matuhuha Akula, uh, writing from Srimad Bhagavatam 10.10.10. .10 While living, one may be proud of one's body, thinking oneself a very big man, minister, president, or even demigod. But whatever one may be after death, this body will turn either into worms, into stools, or into ashes. If one kills poor animals to satisfy the temporary whims of his body, um, one does not know that he will suffer in his next birth. For such a sinful miscreant must go to hell and suffer the results of his actions. Yeah, for those who kill animals, and they also, in the next life, they also take birth as an animal and, and are, are killed. Right. There's a wonderful um, from uh, Shukhavala Deepthi Mataji to everyone. She's in Conversation and Morning Walks in 1973 by His Divine Grace um, Prabhupada. Yeah, but, very good. Can a person eat meat? Uh, can a person who meat who eats meat obtain a human birth or put back into animal species? And Prabhupada uh. answers, um, where is it? What is Prabhupada saying? Yeah. So Prabhupada is saying he will become animal and will be killed. That animal oh. will become man to kill him. Wonderful. Wow. Yeah. Oh, mam Mamsa. Even ritualistic killing, according to scripture, causes ah. one to be killed in a, in, a, in a future life by the same animal. Oh, who becomes Maharaj, a human Maharaj what did you say yes because there are religion that um, allows scriptural for example eating like halal food what is what it's should be mam yeah it's called no. mamsa yeah mamsa Mam means that uh, at a full moon night a person comes and approaches a goat and chances a particular mantra the mantra means my dear mr go you are sacrificing your life for me and so i can eat you in a future life you i will be killed by you and you will eat me that's the mantra Ma amsha, yes amsha. so it's it's explained by the acharyas that one when they understand the actual meaning of the mantra that will discourage them this allows for people who are determined to eat meat in any situation to go under the Vedic uh, process. And that way they get enlightened about what is their future. Nowadays, people don't follow any particular standard. And therefore, they just do what they want. And they kill, not knowing what the results will be. But 
but the results, whether you know the results or not, the results will come. Mm -hmm. It's automatic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's the law of karma. That's the law of action and reaction. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Um, Radha Jyoti Mataji, would you like to go ahead and ask your questions, Mata? Yes, Mataji. Hare Krishna and then what to you? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj Ji. Uh, my question to you is, uh, I have seen that there are many vegetarian, means those people, there are many young youths who eat uh, veg, but they have the tendency to taste and, you know, try once or uh, we'll try because there is the life is, we get life once. So we need, we should yeah. try everything once. And that tendency of trying diverts them from a, a sattvic life towards the hellish life or the hellish tendencies. And then uh, it, then the life become, then they get, means one on one, they go on towards the, uh, wrong habits so uh, is what to do about this tendency how to tell them about this tendency of trying once is not good could you please teach something on this Hare Krishna somebody wants to do something it doesn't matter what you say they're going to do it anyway <laughs> <laughs> but all you can say is that the results of what you're doing will not be good if you if you just once want to stick your hand in the fire just to see if it burns, yes, <laughs> right. I'll only do it once. <laughs> it's foolish. If you know what's right and you know what's wrong, but you want to try what's wrong just to see what it's like, then that might we'll be do the fire. That might be the last thing you do. <laughs> that that's there's no intelligence behind that. It's just foolishness. There are so many things that are good that we haven't done. Why don't we, if we want to try new things, why don't we try the things within the realm of of, of or in the realm of spirituality. Then we can experiment in that way for what is beneficial. Okay, so unfortunately I have to depart because I have another <laughs> Coming up in five minutes. So thank, <clears throat> thank you. you so much, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Chandramani Maharaj. You will really just quickly, savior. quickly switch on your cameras. Let Maharaj glance at you. Maharaj bless. is about to leave. Let Maharaj bless everybody. Maharaj, please okay. accept okay. all our humble obeisances at your lotus feet. <laughs> Thank, 